so. I'm kind of surprised we have it then. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so two things, one being the policy and two being who we're going to use. Yeah, the cost is going to be minimal. I really don't think it's going to exceed maybe $500 to $1,000 a year. It's about $40 for a background check for a full-time employee um, and maybe 10 to 15 for summer help because we're going to do a more limited check on summer help because they're only here for a short period of time. Do you anticipate going in backwards, or is it just going from now forward? Uh, I'd like to start in January. Okay. So perspective, new new employees. Yeah, yeah. new employees. Um, the policy does say, like, as needed for promotions or as deemed necessary for promotions. Um, but, yeah, just new employees. I'd like to start it in January. I thought that would be a good time to start. Hopefully have the new handbook starting then, and I think it's just... And we've also met with insurance company in the past, and they've asked why we're not doing it. So, how many wires do you experience yearly? Summer help, I'm guessing somewhere around 10. Um, new hires, I wouldn't think more than 10 in a year. I, I would say 10 is probably our average. It all just depends. I guess policy first. Yeah, yeah I don't think, and I don't think the board necessarily needs to pick the vendor. We can just let Julie do that because it's not an actual contract with them. There's not a years of service. There it is. Pretty yeah. reputable, though. I'm but familiar if, with them. If something were to come up, though, she could use a different vendor. Sure, if she needed to. Okay. So I think we'll just vote on the policy, and then you can make a motion to approve the background check policy presented. I'll second. Spain by Jamie, second by Lauren. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Thanks, Julie. Okay. Thanks for your help on all Thanks that. Thanks for all your work. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Rick Denny, you have a uh, point of information for the board regarding our lead and copper service line letter. So you may or may not have received a letter in the mail about lead service lines, possibility of uh, serving the meter or yeah, serving the customers either on a utility side or the customer side or an unknown. A couple years ago, EPA uh, mandated that all utilities go out and do a lead service line inventory, and the notification was to go out by October 15th, I think. Yeah, October 15th. So if you received one, it's going to explain to you that you either have a galvanized line on our side, which is to the meter pit, or on your side. You're not required or mandated to do anything if you have a lead service line or a galvanized line on the customer side. Um, it's just informational purposes for you, obviously. But on the utility side, uh, EPA has given us 10 years to replace those. Um, Greensburg's been very adamant since the lead and copper rule was put into effect in 91, 92 and they pretty much replaced all we've got them all replaced i think we're down to about 150 on our side so um again it's not mandated if you have galvanized on your side um informational purposes i think uh our phone number was in the letter that went out if anybody has any questions and, and we've got a lot of phone calls uh in the last few days so any questions if it is on the utility side, which is the meter to the main, we <laughs> have, as you mentioned, over the next 10 years, the we have we to replace. We have 10 years to come and replace it. Yep. Your goal is within the next three. Three years. That is our financial responsibility. <clears throat> Correct. But on their side of the meter, if they choose a replacement, is their responsibility. Correct. And then, um, if people, as you mentioned, have questions, the water plant or the utility office is the best place to contact. Yeah, I think I uh, sent an email out to all the departments just in case they ran into somebody or somebody would call the wrong department, they have the information to let people know what it's all about. So. Everybody get a letter or just no, those? No, just, those just the ones affected. <clears throat> if we have copper on our side, you have copper or PVC on your side, you did not receive a letter. Yeah. So a vast majority did it. Right. Mm. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mark Kloster Camper, first item is purchase of equipment with Proceeds, I think you want to, 
the the bond has the ability to purchase equipment as well um, outside of the guaranteed maximum price because we are proposing to use bond proceeds for this um, Mark and I think it's best if we inquire with the council about purchasing equipment with those proceeds at the meeting immediately following this. But because this board f purchases items, um, he, we think you need to approve the purchase should you choose on the condition that the council approve the use of those funds. Mark, what is it that you would like to purchase? We have a couple of items now that the building's up and functional. Um, we've got a... <coughs> Telehandler, it's a unit for moving materials. We'll also utilize it around town when we're doing street light replacements and repairs. But it gives us the capability to reach into our new salt building and put material away the way we need to, to the back of the bay. <clears throat> and we've waited to see where we're at as far as the funding that was left over at the end of the bonding process. And I believe you have a quote in front of you. Uh, it's not a new machine, it's a used machine, uh, local low hours, good shape, and that is from Ward Equipment for 64.9. I don't have another written quote. I priced one similar to it from the Callister, and it was a little more money. This one also includes a four-way material bucket. The other one didn't. It just had forks. Uh, it makes sense to we have the equipment we need to do job we want to do so and since there is there are funds available provided the council agrees I would have moved that we approve pending council's um, approval motion's been made by Glenn second second by Robin any other questions all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed okay now on to mowers Okay, uh, we are looking at replacing our two John Deere mowers. Um, one of them we are going to keep. We are going to allow that, the better of the two, to be given to the fire department so they can mow around their own property at their new site. So that seems like a good place for one of them. The second one's going to be traded in. Um, I went and got two quotes from local people. The first one came from Caning Equipment with John Deere. The second one came from Stone's Farm Service. Uh, they both quoted, I believe you have copies of specs that were prepared. We tried to make sure we were bidding comparable machines as far as engine size, cut, uh, motion capability, etc. And the Kubota quote came in at 23290 The John Deere quote came in at $21,500.16. So I would say we go with the lower of the two, since they're similar pieces of equipment. This is part of your budget, equipment budget? Correct. This was budgeted last year. So it's in the 24 budget for this expenditure. I'll move the person Second. Which has been made by Robin, second by Jamie. All those in favor saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Sale of fuel tanks. Okay, at the old facility, um, when we went to the bulk purchasing from, or the point of purchasing from the local filling stations and didn't utilize our on, on road gas fuel tank, we simply had an off road diesel fuel tank uh, for like Bobcat. Backhoe, I don't think what else. Street sweeper, a couple of other items. When we started the review with IDEM and some of our requirements, we still had what they call single wall tanks with no diking or containment. Um, we went ahead and bought a new dual wall tank and set up the new facility for our off road diesel. So we have these two tanks remaining. They have pumps on them, they're both functional, they've been on site. Um, they're not a highly marketable item because so few people can use them. Agricultural exemption is one of the best places where they can still utilize them. Um, Owens Auction Service is having a consignment auction at the Decatur County Fairgrounds on December the 7th. Uh, it's going to specialize strictly in agricultural equipment, and I'd like to take them out there because I think we'll get the best bang for the buck as far as 
the sale of those two tanks. And I'm asking for that approval. Make a motion to approve. Motion has been made by Jamie, second by Lauren. Those in favor saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. A couple quick items for you. Um, as I mentioned in your packets, we are uh, the owners of a billboard on I-74 that uh, has been in disrepair for a while and part of our concerted effort to improve the gateways to our community. Um, our water team and our other teams have been kind of helping us get that cleaned up. It, we do need to do some structural repairs to the back of it and uh, put a new wrap on it. So I presented to you a quote from Green Sign Company to do that. It's come in with our brand. There is a slight uh, grammar error on the signs that we will get updated in the um, rendering. But uh, then the, the wrap, the, the sign component becomes much more affordable after the updates to the, the backing uh, becomes effective. So there is money still in this year's budget for the gateway project. So I would ask that we enter into that contract this year <coughs> so that we can get that under contract before the end of the year. <coughs> Any questions? If not, I would take a motion to approve the contract with green signs as presented. So moved. I'll second. Motion's been made by Glenn, second by Lauren. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed. Thank you. The wastewater uh, department also is uh, purchasing a mower for the end of the year. They do have two quotes in there, too. They're a different style than the ones we just talked about. And the one they did stones and um, John Deere as well. They would like to the Kubota is less expensive, and that was their favorable one. Would it, any questions? Would entertain a motion to purchase that for them as well. That's within their budget for this year, right? So moved. Motion's been made to purchase the mower from Second. Stones. Second by Robin. All those in favor, say for some aye. Aye. Those opposed? Do we need to get rid of one, or is it going to the junkyard? Junkyard probably. Junkyard probably. Okay. That'll work. Um, in conversation with them as well, they uh, were inquiring about purchasing a truck um, to be used for the plant. It was later <coughs> determined that a better use may be to move the side-by-side -side that they currently have to their maintenance operation and replace that side by side with a lighter duty, uh, less severe um, side by side, and then not need to purchase a truck just to drive around the plant. They would prefer to do that option. So there's two quotes for you, one from John Deere, one from Kubota. And it is also in, they had the budgeted for a truck. And so the Kubota um, was the less expensive. And again, they're preferred. They also do have a Kubota UTV already. <coughs> I think it's a, if that's what they prefer, and it's better than buying a truck. So, if would take a motion to purchase the Kubota side by side. So moved. Second. Motion's made by Glenn, second by Robin. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Last month or two months ago, Julie came forward with a bunch of updates to our job descriptions. One that was missing is the assistant wastewater superintendent that is not something that we've had previously uh, but we, we do have it on our salary ordinance but we do not have a job description that ties to it we i would like for us to approve this the job description so that we have it available and we can then proceed should we choose to with it it is not adding another person to the department it is simply adding a job description to the And then that would be in our record of job descriptions. I'll move we add the job description. I'll second it. Motion's been made by Robin, second by Lauren. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed. Final item, um, at the old fire station, there is a standby generator there. Again, the wastewater department has requested um, if we are so willing that they would take that generator, uh, place it on a trailer, rehab it, and then it would be usable for all of our single phase lift stations to which there are 10, 8? 6. Oh, that's close. 
six. Um, I was just making up numbers. We could have we gone all the way forward. It was even. Uh, it was an even number, 10, 8, yeah. and 6. Um, that way, um, we're not, in theory, purchasing maybe one in the future. I don't think it adds any value to the building when we go to sell it. Um, and then also, if the board will give it from the city proper to the utility, then we can create the asset and it can become their responsibility. It also gets it out of there before we start showing the building as an RFP so that it's not, oh, I thought that was included. I did talk to the chief about it. It does work. Um, it does need some maintenance work, but it's uh, repairable, by, I think, by our team. Reduce. Yeah. yeah. So I take a motion to approve the transfer of the generator at the fire department to the wastewater utility, please. So moved. Motion's been made by Glenn. Second by Robin. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 That was opposed. Okay. Um, we are going to do something uh, a little different this evening as well. Uh, we want uh, Chief McNeely has asked that we start uh, swearing in our uh, GPD officers. We typically will do this um, in a on an afternoon uh, when there's not much fanfare for the men and women joining our department. And uh, this is sort of the big, and then of course the fire does their annual uh, recognition event here at City Hall too. So we're going to start, uh, or at least try out for a while, um, recognizing our new incoming officers. So tonight we have Andrew Johnson, who is joining our team. So we're going to do the official swearing in out here um, as a part of our Board of Works meeting. And then of course that would fall on the one meeting per year that we're 10 minutes over. Um, but we're going to do it and uh, we're going to welcome him to the team. And then if you and your family will stay around afterwards, we'll get pictures. Okay. after me. I state your name. I, Andrew Johnson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Indiana. The Constitution of the State of Indiana. The ordinances of the City of Greensburg. The ordinances of the City of Greensburg. And that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Perform my duties. Perform my duties. As a probationary police officer. As a probationary police officer. According to the law. According to the law, the best of my abilities, the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome aboard. You all should have received a copy of the claims. Any edits, additions, or corrections? If not, take a motion to approve the claims as presented. Move. Second. Motion's been made and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, I remind everyone, um, come out and uh, support the Holiday Walk Main Street's doing uh, December 7th downtown. We are hosting the Small Business Administration. Uh, the United States Small Business Administration will be here on Thursday. Uh, we, Greensburg, is selected as their Small Neighborhood Community of the Year. They do one of these in the entire state of Indiana, so we're very fortunate to have them. Um, our stellar team is going to be their host. Uh, everyone is welcome to join us for coffee at 9 a.m. at the branch in the back room. It would be a great opportunity to chat with uh, the regional and state leaders from the Small Business Administration, and then we're going to walk them around and show them some of our unique businesses in downtown. So we invite everybody out to coffee at 9 on Thursday. Board, anything else? If not, take a motion to adjourn. Yes. Motion's been made. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? We will start the uh, meetings adjourned. We will start the council meeting in approximately 10 to, 30, 10 to 15 minutes.